Hi everyone and welcome to day 16 of our 21 day yoga challenge together. My name is Antoinette and I'm so excited that we get to keep moving forward into this third week of practice together. Tonight we're going to focus on upper body. So I think if you've taken the class already, but I'm going to remind you, if you have some low weights, and I use a very low weight like a soup can, and some higher weights, I've got a five pound weight and a one pound weight. That helps us be able to go into um, different experiences and different levels. And also to have those things close by you at the top of the mat. That way, if you start to experience a level where you think, you know, this is a little too much for me, you can just drop that heavy weight, go right down to the light weight, or vice versa. You want a little bit more resistance, you can start to take that, that heavier weight uh, in the hand. I like to move in and out of yoga postures with our weights so that we can experience some of the things that we've been doing in our practice as we go in and out of warriors, but this time with the weight building resistance and starting to really strengthening, straighten that upper body and strengthen that upper body. I'm gonna come down into the, the camera here. We are gonna start off in Sukhasana and start off in our easy posture, just to start. Remember, you can pat, have a blanket to pad the knees as we go into tabletop, because we're gonna be on our hands and knees for a little while as we focus on triceps, and doing some of the, the, le the lifts with the arm. Have blocks close by as well. I was just telling one of the Hopkins nurses that I quite literally came from, I had a patient and then I came home. So here we are. And so I'm so excited that I get to practice with you all right from the PACU <laughs> to, our, to our home here. Let me let a couple more people in on Zoom. And see I don't know that one it's really important on zoom to the zoom students that you have your name on the zoom list so that I can see who you are when I don't see you it's um I can't actually let you in um, because I don't know what's going on <laughs> so here we are all right so let's sit tall now let's sit in our sukhasana remember if, if sukhasana is not available to you and this is troubling for the knees, you can always sit on a block or start to elevate yourself off the floor just a little bit with a blanket or something else to like give the, the knees relief. If that doesn't work, then always remember too, the other option you can do is to come into what we call hero's pose, where here I am on my knees, I can take a block at its tallest point, bring it right underneath the buttocks and sit up. So now I'm just kind of sitting into the block, but I'm upright, and that gives me some relief on my knees too. We can still do the same kinds of postures, movement that we can, but now I don't have that extra weight on the knees as well. So just know that that's available to you. As we come into Sukhasana, I just want to say thank you to Sibley Hospital for the support of this challenge. And then I also want to give a very, very sincere shout out to my friend, Dr. Jeff Zahn, who wrote the book, Choose Happiness. And I'm gonna bring it up really close to the camera for the Facebook people. I already did for the Zoom people. It's a wonderful book and I'm just giving him the plug because tonight I'm gonna to read and provide a meditation to you that's based on his words and things that resonated with me. My theme for today and for this week is on choosing happiness. And one of the things as I was driving home today and talking to one of my best friends is that I have control over my own happiness. And so do you. And so that's what this meditation is about and what we'll, we'll practice together as we move through this evening and our practice. So it's just starting off in Sukhasana, just taking a moment to close the eyes. Or if it doesn't feel safe to you, to just take the gaze just a couple feet out in front. <clears throat> Excuse me. With a good deep inhale in and an exhale out, we can start to bring the torso up, right? If it felt good to us to bring the arms even down beside us and just let the collarbone spread and open. If you notice in a quick body scan from head going down toward the torso, any sort of 
tension that might be held in the upper body. You have that ability to create tension yourself. Again, you have control over that tension, right? Making fist with your hands or maybe shrugging your shoulders up towards your ears as you inhale and then allowing some release and relief as you let the shoulders relax. Remember too that if you're in your work day, that's something that you can do as well, right? Creating tension in the body as you sit or stand in whatever area you're working in by creating tension and taking a good deep inhale and then relaxing, it kind of helps the body to just chill out, right? Just relax. So just know that that's available to you. We find that natural rhythm of breath in and out. It's like an ocean, right? Like the waves coming to the shore and back out to sea as we inhale and exhale. We feel the air as it hits the nostrils, as the lungs expand on that in-breath, as the navel comes back toward the spine. Perhaps we can even hold that breath at its tallest point and then allow a deep exhale. Again, without any judgment, just noticing if there's any tension that might be held in the body. And today, inviting release to that area. One of my good friends in meditation, Harpreet, used to say, invite it for a cup of tea and just allow it to be. <laughs> and I used to love that. Let's breathe in for a count of three, wherever you might be, for one, two, and three. Let's hold that breath. Start to let the navel come back toward the spine as you engage the core. And then exhale for one, two, and three. Take your hands down beside you now and now create a fist with your hands and start to draw the shoulders up toward the ears as you inhale for one, two, and three. Hold that breath. And now exhale for one, two, and three. Another good deep inhale in, two, and three. Hold the breath, create the tension, and then let everything relax, two, and three. Let's open the eyes together, and on the inhale, bringing the arms all the way up is making this expansive motion as you reach and extend. We start to draw the fingers up to its tallest point as we reach through the middle fingers. I have to let one more person in. Hold it there, and then exhale, bringing the arms down. Inhaling as you draw the arms up. Exhaling as we bring the arms down. Let's do a twist now. Let's reach up and extend, reaching up, inhaling. Let's twist over to the left as we take our right hand to our left knee. The left hand's right behind us. And we keep that hand padded as we take a look toward that right side as we twist toward the right. We sit tall. Our gaze goes toward the right, the left rather, and we just take a good deep inhale in and an exhale out. Just noticing what our environment is right now. Maybe the sounds around us. Perhaps you hear my son upstairs. And then we'll come back as we reach up and extend. Good deep inhale. That's what living in a small Cape Cod is, right? Small closed environment. Exhale as we head over to the right side now. And we'll take a look over toward the right. Our other right. Our hand is padded down just below the sacrum when we start to push the torso up. That opportunity to let the belly expand and then contract back with the breath. Let's come back and do one more twist as we reach up and extend, inhaling. Head over to the left side, taking your right hand to your left knee. Inhale as you push the torso up and now start to take a look over that left shoulder if it feels okay on the neck. Maybe the eyes go even a little farther back as you twist. Come back on the inhale, reaching up and extending. Good deep inhale. Exhale, let's head over to the right side now. Right hand right behind us. And again, on that inhale, we push the torso up, twisting from the abdomen, not from the shoulders. But in this twist, maybe we're able to go a little farther and take a look over that right shoulder if it's okay on our neck. And then maybe we can even bring our eyes just past that. 
Coming back as we inhale, reaching up and extending. Good deep inhale here. And an exhale coming out wide. Open up the, the chest and the arms, like you're gonna give someone a huge hug. The shoulder blades come back together, so we'll be accessing the shoulder blades tonight. And then as we take that exhale, let's start to round the back and take the hands forward, bringing the back toward the back of the room. You can even bring the head down just slightly so you're rounding the back, and then come out as you expand and reach, and then on the exhale, coming back with the arms. Back together. Inhaling as we come out, good deep inhale. And exhale again, hands coming back together. Last time as we inhale, spreading the arms out wide, and then exhale coming down. Just roll the shoulders back for a moment. Find your breath. And then roll the shoulders forward. Find your breath. Reach up and extend as we inhale in. And as we exhale, just start to take the hands slightly forward. So stay in that Sukhasana, that crisscross fashion. As you lean forward, see how if you can walk the fingertips out in front of you. Maybe a little sway back and forth so you feel the hips. Walk the hands gently over to the right side so that you're leaning and hinging over that right knee. And maybe you feel a nice release on the left hip. Again, if the knees allow you to do this tonight, this might not be for you. So we just offer these opportunities for feeling expansiveness or feeling a little release in tight places, walking your hands over toward that left knee as we hinge over. And then let's come back, back to our midline. Gently start to walk the hands back up as you sit the body tall and rise up with the arms once more. Good deep inhale. As we exhale now, we're going to bring ourselves over our knees and come into our tabletop pose. So now set yourself up here. So for some of us, we have wrist issues, and I just was talking to one of the students tonight. She prefers to be on her fists, right, because she has wrist issues. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a great way to do that. You can even go into your plank pose in that way too, right? So just find the way that works for you, that resonates with you. We all have different things going on in our bodies. And today's a different day than it was yesterday. So just being respectful of that. If it's okay to pad the hands, great. Remember too, you can bring forearms down to the blocks. That's another way to relieve some of the wrist issues that you might feel. And then still to do the same thing of coming to fist if you need that as well. So we're going to have our small, our low, and our high weights tonight. But first, let's just start off with a few cat-cows. Here we are in our neutral position of tabletop. Our neck is long. We look down toward the mat. Just listening to the words for a moment. Let's access the shoulder blades first. So our, our arms are straight. We'll start to kind of hug the elbows as we circle them in toward the midline of the body. And so now we feel that strength and stability and perhaps we feel the biceps muscles of the arms. We could gently just sink the, the chest down as we bring the shoulder heads high. And then keeping the arms straight again, just bringing the shoulder head, bringing the chest back up. So now you feel that rooting down connection of the hands and the arms. Now let's sway the chest. So we'll come into our cow pose as we start to sway the chest down and take a look up if it's okay on the cervical spine. The buttocks start to come up toward the ceiling too. We sink the heart and the chest and the stomach low. And then on the exhale, we'll start to round the back as we take that up. On the first one, we're gonna tent the fingertips and push the shoulder heads up a little higher as we round. And then on the inhale, we'll sway the back and start to take a look up again, eyes and chin if it feels okay on the neck. Heart and belly sink low, and then on the exhale, keeping the hands padded, let's start to round the back. So we feel the shoulder heads. One last time as we sway the back, taking the heart low, chest, eyes, and, and the chin high, and then we'll start to take an exhale as we round the back. And then pause here, let's come back into our neutral and just Feel a little bit of the stretch as we take our right leg out first. We'll push back on that right calf. As we do and push back on that right calf, flex that right buttock so you feel that strength and stability of that right leg. You feel that right quadricep engage, right kneecap engage. 
gently loll that right heel over to the right side and gently sink into that right hip if it feels okay to do that. Come back again as you bring that right heel up and then gently bring the right heel over toward the left side. We pad the left hand and the left knee and now we pad that right foot and let's bring that, left, that right arm up to 12 o'clock. Reach up. So now we're just opening, feeling the expansiveness of the chest as we rise up, inhaling. And as we exhale, let's take the right arm up and over the body. So just stretching here. I'm tenting my left fingertips just to give me a little bit of height. Remember, if you had a block close by, you could bring your hand to the block and rise up a little higher. Maybe even take that right hand slightly behind you so you're opening up and feeling that open front part of the body. We'll windmill the arms over and down, back, hand comes back to the mat, and knee comes back to the mat. Let's take your left foot out. So finding that movement as we push back gently on that left calf, flexing the left buttock, engaging that left leg. Left heel can come over toward the left side of the mat as you dip that left hip in, just getting a nice stretch along the iliotibial band, that IT band of the outer muscle, right, of that leg. Coming back as you push back on that left calf again and then gently start to rock the weight over toward the right right side as you pad the right hand on the mat right knee on the mat and bring that left arm up to 12 o'clock reach up again finding some reach and length in that right hand as it roots down you can gently bring that left hand behind you left foot is padded on the mat so you feel the sole of that left foot make contact with the mat and then the left arm comes up and over the body Nice stretch, and then let's circle the arms over and down. Come back to your tabletop here. Take a good deep inhale in, and an exhale out. Grab your high weights first, right? Come up onto your knees. I'm gonna face you. We tuck our elbows in toward our body, right? And then we're gently gonna bring the weights down and then back up. So doing a biceps curls just to start. Now let's add a little bit here. So notice what's happening in the shoulders, right? Am I rounding? Start to bring the shoulders back so shoulder blades come together. Set yourself back up to hug the elbows in toward the body and then come down again. And notice the difference in what just happened dynamically in the body as you lift and lower. Maybe nothing happened. Maybe something happened. I hope something happened. We'll take the weights down and then back up. And now let's add the breath. Right, finding your inhale and your exhale as you lift and lower. And now let's alternate. So taking the right up and then the left. Taking the right up and then the left. We're going to be doing these same things, but we'll be doing them in an upright and vertical fashion up onto our feet in just a short time. So just kind of getting ourselves warmed up. Bring everything down now, and now bring the weights to your shoulders, and then rise up with the arms, and then come down halfway. Rise up, and then come down. If this puts any strain on you, then you can take your lower weights. Coming up, we're pushing up. Now take the weights out, so now almost like you have them in the palm of your hand, and now we're going to come up, and then come back down. Coming up, so we're just noticing the difference between the two motions. Finding your breath. Last time, and then bring the weights back down, and then all the way down, let's come back to biceps curls. We're gonna go for eight, seven, finding your breath, six, five, four, Three, two, and one. Bring those weights down. Let's come back to tabletop. Grab your small weights, or you can keep the high weights, your choice. In our tabletop, we're gonna bring our right foot forward, left foot slightly back, come up on the inhale, reaching up as we extend. Good deep inhale here. And clasping the hands together, just reach up, steeple chase the fingers, and then head over with fingertips over to the right side. So we're just stretching here. 
Coming back, but deep inhale. And as we exhale, let's come down. Start to hinge that right hip backwards, flexing that right foot. So remember, if you have blocks, you could walk them back gently so that it remains high with the torso. If you don't have blocks, hands can be on the hips. We're just gonna gently hinge forward. So we're just stretching here before we get going with another set of weights. Coming back, good deep inhale. We start to straight, start to flex that right knee. Hands are gonna come back as we frame that right foot, tucking the back toes under, we're just gonna come up. So we're just doing a lunge here. I'm gonna move the block so you can see if you're watching. Coming up onto the ball of that left foot, just finding some movement here, coming up and back. And now gently bringing that left knee back. Right knee comes back, let's go over the other side. So just stretching first. Again, just finding a little movement here. Bring that right knee slightly behind you and then come up on the inhale, reaching up. Good, deep inhale. Exhale, clasping the hands together, steeple chasing the fingers, bringing them up toward the ceiling and then gently bringing the fingertips over to the left side. Finding a nice stretch here. We activate the core here. You can even flex that right buttock so you feel the strength of the right leg. Coming back up, good deep inhale. And on the exhale, let's come down, framing that left foot, gently hinging the hips back, flexing that left foot. Again, you could take the blocks and walk them back so that they frame that left knee, bringing the torso high if that feels good to you. Just a little hamstring stretch as you hinge over that left leg. Coming back up again, gently bend that left knee, frame the left foot, and bring that left foot back to meet the right. Here we are now, back in our tabletop. So again, you could take your heavy weight if you wanted. We're gonna, again, we're gonna just do a lift here or if you wanted to take the smaller weight. So find what works for you. So weights are gonna be down right in front of the knees. Left hand will be down to start. We're gonna hug the elbow in toward the body and lift that right weight up. We hug that right weight in toward the elbow, right? And then if it feels okay to do so, either keep it here and then bring it down or start to draw it backwards. So now you get that tricep is as well. Bring it in and then bring it down. So now let's find our breath as we inhale, exhale, bring it out. Inhale, coming back to midline and then exhale, lower. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. Lifting and extending, bringing it back and then down. Last time, extending, coming back and bringing it down. Let's go to the other side. So taking our right hand down, grab your left weight. Again, hugging that elbow into the body. So mechanically making sure that you have that strength and stability of that shoulder. Inhaling as we lift up. Exhaling as we bring that left weight backwards so we feel the tricep engage. Coming back to midline and then lowering. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, and lowering. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and lower. Coming up, extending, coming back, and lowering. Taking the navel back to the spine so you're using the core, coming up, last time, extending, coming back, and lowering. Let's lose the weight, come up onto our knees, rise up as we inhale, both arms come up, good deep inhale here. Exhaling down your right arm, reach up high with that left arm, then let's head over to the right side for a stretch. Come back as we inhale, good deep inhale, reaching up. Exhale, taking the left arm down. Rise up with that right arm. Then let's head over to the left side, jutting out that right hip. Again, accessing the core as you make this reach and stretch. Coming back up, good deep inhale. And then exhale, coming back down to tabletop. Let's tuck our toes under so we can come up to stand. But before we do that, set yourself up by making sure that your weights are at the top of your mat so that you have access to them as well as the blocks. Let's tuck our toes under and come up into our first downward facing dog. Maybe our only downward facing dog. Remember, if this is too much on your hands, so one of the students said she uses the weights, and that's how she comes into her downward facing dog. 
There's nothing wrong with that. It actually felt pretty good when I was just doing it. I've done it in different ways over my lifetime as I practiced yoga and I had injuries. Start to sink the heels down toward the floor. If the hamstrings are very tight tonight, you could just start to pedal the feet, taking one knee down, you can go as low as you want, or even lift that foot off the floor as you sink one heel a little bit lower. Sometimes that's enough to give that hamstring even a deeper stretch and invite a deeper release to it if it feels very tight. You can also walk the hands a little farther up toward the top of the mat if that feels good. And then as always, I just invite you to explore the weight of the distribution of weight of your hands. So you can gently start to rock the weight toward the forefinger and thumb, and then gently rock the weight back toward the pinky finger and the heel of the hand. A lot of times we're dumping a lot of the weight toward the heel and the pinky finger of the hand. And so just gently starting to rock the weight slightly forward so that you have that even distribution. You may also know that it starts to access different muscle groups toward the shoulders, right? So just kind of playing around with that. Staying in your downward facing dog if it feels good. If it doesn't, come back down to your knees and just wait for the, the next move. If it feels okay, let's bring that left leg and bring it high. As we lift that left leg, start to bring that left pinky toe down toward the mat so we're not hiking that up without a proper alignment. And now bring that left foot down. Let's do the other side. As we inhale, drawing that right foot up, reaching up, bringing that right pinky toe slightly down. Again, accessing the core, we push away, rooting down with the hands, rising up with that right leg. And now bring that right leg down. Let's go one more time as we reach up with that left leg. Stay here, or you can draw that left knee in toward the midline, bringing it in for a crunch if you want, and then reaching back up with that left leg. Left leg is gonna come down, let's go to the right side. Inhaling, reaching up, good deep inhale. If you want, drawing that right knee in, coming in for a crunch, and then drawing that right foot back up, if you want. Right foot's gonna come down and we're gently gonna start to walk the feet up toward the hands or jump up, whichever way. Inhale up to a half lift, the hands are on the shins. If you are in tabletop, you can start to make your way up to Tadasana to find our way together. Exhale as we forward fold, a gentle bend in the knees as we rise up, reaching up, good deep inhale. Coming up. And then exhale, hands to prayer. Let's find a little stillness for one moment. I'm just gonna move the camera since I'm upstairs. Up a little bit now. Coming back as we inhale. And exhale, Tadasana. In our Tadasana, gently bringing the shoulders Shoulder blades back, opening up the chest a little more as we broaden the collarbone. Navel back toward the spine, again a gentle bend in the knees. And then if the balance feels good tonight, gently rocking the weight slightly forward and up onto the ball of the feet. Heels come off the mat. And then gently rocking the weight slightly back with toes coming up. I always like to do this, bringing the toes back to the mat. So we feel that connection, that rooting down of ourselves on the mat, where we stand proprioceptively right here. And then we find our breath. And then maybe with a quick body scan, just noticing interoceptively where we are right now. Starting to feel the strength of our upper bodies. Let's rise up as we inhale, good deep inhale in. Exhale as we forward fold, Grab whichever weights you would like now, low or high. So maybe start off with low, come up to a half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Gently start to rise up, reaching up, coming all the way up with your weights now. Exhale, hands to prayer with weights. We draw the elbows in toward the midline as we bring that right knee up. Using the core, we'll grow taller on that right side Exhale, kicking out with that right foot, challenging ourselves to bring the right foot to hip height. Coming back as we bend that right knee and then stepping back to warrior one, arms come up, reaching up and inhaling. We're gonna exhale as we forward fold over that left knee, bent, 
arms come back, back behind us. So that same motion that we were just doing when we were on hands and knees, we bring the right, the hands behind us, and now just like we have the weights in the palm of our hands, our palms are facing up, our arms are long, and we're going to start a tiny pulse as we hinge over that bent left knee. Navel comes back toward the spine, so we're using the core. As we make that pulse, the shoulder blades start to come together. And we find our breath. Again, maybe you need the, the, law, the heavier or the lighter weights, your choice, as you make this pulse. Good deep inhale and an exhale. Let's straighten that left leg. Now arms are down beside us. Reach up and extend with the arms coming up. We start to flex that left foot. Take a look up if it feels okay on the back. Cactus arm the arms. And then hinge back as we take the knee bent. We're going to bring the arms together now, arms and elbows, and now come out. Again, if you want smaller or heavier weights, your choice. Come in and bring it out. Bring it in and out. Again, you're using the core as you hinge into that left bent knee. You feel that back right pinky toe make contact with the mat. And we find our breath here as we bring the arms together and reach out. Again, when you start to bring the arms out, bring the shoulder blades together so you're accessing that. Drop the shoulders down just a little bit so you're not using the accessory muscles, right? from the neck going down toward the shoulder, those upper trapezius muscles. Bring the arms together and then coming back down. So really using more of the lower, right? Lower traps and rhomboids as we bring the arms together and come out. Finding our breath here. Last one. And now bring the arms back down. Bring the right foot to meet the left. If you felt your left quadricep, start to just give yourself a rock star kick out. Find your way. Arms are down beside you in Tadasana. Roll the shoulders back for just a moment with a gentle bend in the knee. Inhale as we reach up and extend. Arms come up. So now you know exactly where we're going to go to the other side. Left knee comes up. Engage the core, drawing up on the inhale. Exhale as we kick out that left foot. Hip height or thereabouts, only in your mind's eye. Left foot comes back to bend, and then let's step back into warrior one. So you know exactly where we're going to go now. Find the weights that resonate with you in, this, in these postures. Good deep inhale. So we find weight in that right foot. Right knee is bent. As we exhale forward fold using the core, arms come down and back behind us. Palms come up toward the ceiling, and we let the weights just sit in our hands. Once again, you could even draw the shoulders up toward the ears, then bring them behind you. Start to bring the shoulder blades together. Almost like the thumbs have magnets. Navel back toward the spine, and we start to make the pulse up and down. And we breathe here. Good deep inhale and exhale as we lift and lower. The neck is long, so we're looking down toward the mat. Not at the screen, not ahead but just down, giving the neck relief and just focusing on that lift and lower of the weight. Finding the pulse, continuing your breath, and let's go for four, and three, two, and one. Drop the weights toward the knees, straighten that right leg and flex the right foot, come up as we inhale. Reaching up and finding a nice stretch here. Exhale, start to bend that right knee and cactus arm the arms. Start to bring the elbows as you hug them in, right? And then come back out again, just so you can find your way. Again, the weights are kind of just nestled in the crook of the hand, right? Right into the palm. Let's bring the elbows and the, can the, the, the hands in and then come out. I have cans, you have hands. Bring the hands in the, and the elbows in and then coming out. Got to laugh about this. Coming in and then coming out. Feel that back left pinky toe. Maybe you flex that left buttock. So you feel the strength and stability of that left leg and you're just aware of it. 
And then maybe engaging the core here as you find your breath, bringing the arms out and then bringing the elbows back in. Good deep inhale and exhale. Another good deep inhale and exhale. Last one. And then bring the arms down. Bring the left foot to meet the right. Inhale with arms up, reaching up and extending. Exhale as we forward fold. Grab your heavier weights if you didn't already. Come up to a half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Gently come all the way up to standing, facing one another, and let's come back to a few biceps curls. So maybe your feet are about hip width distance apart. Maybe your feet are together. Either way, we hug the elbows in toward the body, and then let's start alternating pulses here, right? Bringing one arm up and then the other. Finding your breath and smiling, feeling strong in your upper body. Happy that we can be on our mats today. Okay, now notice what you're doing now, and I just noticed it myself, so now I'm gonna guide you as well. Draw the shoulder blades back, hug the elbows in if you weren't already, and then go again. I'm just resetting. I noticed that I needed to make that correction, and maybe you did also. Again, navel back toward the spine as you make these pulses. Let's go for three and two and one. Bring them down and let's go up together, okay? So you're getting the biceps strong. Again, I have my knees gently bent to protect my lower back. You can also straighten without locking. Start to take the navel back toward the spine. Find your breath here, continuing that pulse. And pause. So I'm gonna face you, we're gonna take our feet out wide. We're gonna take our feet toward the corners of the mat. Hands are on our hips and we're gonna sink the hips low. And now just take a little pulse back and forth from side, or a sway back and forth from side to side for a moment. Take that right heel off and then the left heel. Take the right heel off and then the left. Find your way as you bend the knee. And then let's bring both heels down. Maybe you sink down a little lower, maybe you don't. Find your way. Cactus arm the arms. Let's come all the way up, making the shape of an X, and then come back down. Inhaling and exhaling. Go low if you want and reach out. Go low and reach out. Breathing, feeling the strength of your body. Again, if you need to change the weights, do that. If it feels okay, go, keep going. Pause here, so stay low. And now let's bring the elbows in and back out. Finding your breath and coming back out. Coming in and back out. In and out. Let's go for six more. And five. And four and three, maybe you sink a little lower, use the abdomen, two, and one. Bring them down. So now hands are down beside us. We're gonna do one more set with our quadriceps. Start to draw the elbows up and then come down. If you need to straighten the legs, go there. There's no reason why that's not a bad thing. The idea here is the upper body, right? If you want a little more, then get that lower body. You could even go low having a little bit of weight and then come back up. So find your way. Coming up and let's go for four and three, two and one. Straighten the legs, come back, legs come together and then drop those high weights or low weights, whichever you were. Reach up and extend, good deep inhale. I'm gonna face my back towards you we're gonna bend the elbows and take 
that right hand in between the shoulder blades, catching the left elbow, right elbow with our left hand. And then gently start to bend. Take a flex over toward the right side, left side rather, as you feel that right side of the body. Come back as you reach up and extend, both arms come up. And then bending the elbows, we grasp our left elbow with our right hand. Left hand comes in between the shoulder blades and we gently hinge over toward the right side now. I'm feeling a nice stretch here. Reach up and extend, bring the arms down. If it feels okay to clasp the hands behind the back and send them below the sacrum, go there. If that's not in, in the possibility for you, you could gently just grab the forearms. Here, we start to open up the front of the chest, right? So however you arrive in your posture, just so you can feel a nice stretch here. Taking an inhale in and an exhale out. Another good deep inhale and an exhale, just letting it all go. Roll the shoulders back. We're going to make our way down to the floor, do a few push-ups, and then go over onto our backs and then get into a space where we can go into a nice meditation. Reaching up as we extend, good deep inhale. We're going to exhale as we forward fold. As we forward fold, either hands down to the floor or fingertips or to the blocks, depending on where you are. Again, feel the hamstrings as they engage. And then come all the way down. Take the knees down. We're going to take the knees down toward the floor. And then we're going to come into a few yogi push-ups. So you can be in two ways, right? One way is, is that you keep the knees down on the floor, take the feet up, right? We're going to, again, hug the elbows into the body and then sink the heart low and then come back up. Now, if full chaturanga is in your practice, then you can be there too. So knees are off the mat. Again, you start to hug the elbows in toward the body and then sink low and then come back up again. I'm not there yet, so I'm going to keep my knees down. Right? So everybody's different right now. I'm still recovering from my shoulder surgery. So I'm going to keep my knees down. We're going to come down and then come back up. We listen to our own bodies, right? Ahimsa. We do no harm to our bodies and we listen to where we are today. I'm getting stronger and stronger every day and I'm so happy for that and grateful for that. But I'm not quite there for Chaturanga. I'm almost there. Coming down and then coming back up. Coming down and back up. Let's go for three, and two, and one. Come all the way down, and now we're going to do a few cobras. So just like we always do, we're going to take our hands right underneath our shoulders, shoulder heads. We're going to hug the elbows in toward the body. The feet are long. The shoelaces part of the feet are down on the mat. My head is up so you can hear me talking, but your forehead is down on the mat just to start. The neck is long. On the inhale, we raise the head up using the biceps and triceps muscles to push the upper body up and then come back down again. Inhaling as we lift, exhaling as we lower. Inhaling and exhaling. Again, hugging the elbows in so that you protect the upper body. Inhaling, exhale, inhale and exhale. Go as high as you want. Last one. Inhale and exhale. Let's take the arms out long. One last thing. We'll take opposite hand and opposite foot as we lift and lower. Again, feeling the abdomen, feeling the limbs. Your neck is long. Looking down at the mat. Pause here, and then we're gently going to roll ourselves over onto our backs. Find your way there. Let's do a little bit of stretching before we go into Shavasana. So on your back, you may notice that you have a little bit of lower back strain or fatigue. So let's just be here now for a moment without having anything to do. We feel the lower back make contact with the mat. Perhaps we feel the beating of our heart, that aliveness of our bodies, having just moved, that strength of our upper body. 
We inhale in and exhale out. And with each inhale and exhale, perhaps we're able to let the shoulders just release a little bit. The palms can come up. And we start to feel the backs of the arms just make contact with the mat. And maybe the collarbone spreads a little bit. And we just settle here for a minute. Wiggle the toes, feel the soles of the feet. And then let's bring the legs long for a moment, bringing the arms overhead. Good deep inhale as we stretch the body, taking the calves toward the mat, the toes come up, the navel comes back toward the spine as we lengthen. And then just like we were doing on our stomachs, just take opposite hand and opposite foot as you reach long, finding length in the body, a nice stretch. And then gently swim the hands over, grasping that right knee, hugging that in toward the body. We'll take a circle with that right ankle. And we'll breathe here. Maybe it's an audible breath that only you can hear in your home studio. As you circle that right ankle, gently draw that right knee across the body toward the left side, and then let's T-shape out that right arm. Reach out long as you hover that right arm above the mat, letting the shoulder float above the mat to start. In this twist, as you reach out and extend, take the navel back toward the spine in the twist. Now take the belly out as you expand it and then take it back again. As you reach and extend with that right arm, now let that right shoulder head, right forearm, right arm rest on the mat. You've lengthened it by reaching out and extending. Our gaze goes to that outstretched palm. And again, in this twist, you have that opportunity to let the belly expand and contract. You can gently draw that left knee across the body a little bit more or just keep it exactly the way it is. One more good deep inhale in. And as you exhale, drawing that right knee back, let's bring it back toward the midline as you hug it in toward the chest and let's switch it out. We'll take that right leg long, press that right calf into the mat, draw that right knee in toward the midline. Circle that right, that left ankle. I meant the left knee into the midline. Gently start to draw that left knee across toward the right side of the body, catching it in your right hand. And then just like we did before, outstretch that left hand first. So you're floating the left shoulder, left arm off the mat, a couple of inches. As you straight stretch and lengthen that left arm, take a look over toward the left hand. And now let that left shoulder now rest on the mat. Again, creating a little tension and then relaxing it onto the mat so that you feel everything kind of release. Take the gaze over toward that left side. Maybe you start to draw that left knee across the body a little bit more. Again, that opportunity to let the belly expand and then contract back, giving yourself a little digestive massage in this twist. <sighs> Releasing any tension that you might feel, if you feel tension at all. And then drawing that left knee in toward the midline and taking the right knee back in to meet it. We'll gently hug both knees in toward the chest and take a little rock back and forth from side to side. As we do, we feel the spine. We feel the lower back. Hopefully we find a little release here. Let's take the feet straight up toward the ceiling. Flexing the feet, taking the lower back in toward the mat. As we draw the feet toward the crown of the head, allowing that lower back to sink in toward the mat so that we're engaging the abdominal core. Let's just point and flex the feet. Now notice that when you get into this position, if you start to hold any tension in the shoulders, that's where you invite that shoulder, the shoulders to relax. Pointing and flexing the feet. Gently bring the feet about hip width distance apart, make circles with the ankles, go in one direction and then the other. 
Again, the palms could be up, so maybe that the collarbone can spread a little bit more. Maybe the shoulder heads can fall back toward the mat with palms up. Maybe play around with palms down, palms up, and just see what happens with the shoulder heads. We'll start to V-shape out the feet for a moment. Take our hands toward the inner kneecaps as we take our legs out wide. Again, pointing and flexing the feet. Circling the ankles. Removing that bind from the inner kneecaps, bringing the feet back up again and gently bending the knees. Soles of the feet come down to the mat. Let's do a little figure four and then we will do a little more stretching and then we'll go into our Shavasana. Taking our, right, our left hand to our left knee, pushing that left knee away. We'll gently start to draw that right knee up off the mat or stay the way that you just were if that's not where your body can go. We'll gently grasp that right knee, right thigh rather, as we thread our hands through the back toward the right hamstring as we draw that right knee in toward the chest. We let the neck be soft, supple, so that it's not cranked up. We could gently loll the head back and forth from side to side if that felt good to us, or stay perfectly still. Maybe make a circle with that right ankle. If you want a little bit more, drawing that right foot up toward the ceiling for a deeper hamstring stretch or just pointing and flexing the foot. You could even counter stretch by grabbing that, gently grabbing that right back leg and then gently pushing with the other hand that left knee away. If you have strength in the body to do that, that's something else you could do in this posture. Just accessing different nuances to the pose. As you bend that right knee, let's bring the sole of that right foot down, keep that left foot right on the right knee, and gently start to draw that left knee across the body coming into this figure four twist. The sole, the ball of the, right, the left foot comes down toward the floor, and then we can take our right hand to that left outer knee, and then again, gently T-shape out that left arm. You can twist as far as it feels good to you if the lower back allows you, maybe accessing a deeper stretch to that left outer hip. And again, that opportunity as always, when any twist that we're in, finding that belly breath in and out. This helps us with our elimination, with our digestion. digestion. I do this with patients when they're bed bound just different twists in the bed and it helps them be able to eliminate. Let's come back again as we take our back toward the mat. We're gonna take our left foot down to the floor and start and go on the other side. So taking that right foot to the left knee. First with our right hand, we'll push that right knee away from the body. Again, this might be enough for some people without actually drawing that left knee up. Not everybody can go there. But when you're ready, drawing that left knee off the mat and threading your hands through the back of that left hamstring as you gently draw that left knee in toward the body. Remember too that if this is something that you want to do and you have trouble accessing it, then and you have your strap close by, you could always take the strap behind that left leg. So I'm sorry I didn't tell you on the right side, but that's something else that you can always do. So then you just hug the elbows in toward the body as you draw that left leg in. Again, the neck is soft, right? So you're not cranking it. But sometimes if you can't access that, then the strap is a great way to find length in the hands and the arms as you draw it in. <sighs> Breathing into any tight spaces that you might feel. And without any dialogue, noticing how this side of the body feels versus the other. Gently lolling the head back and forth from side to side taking that left foot up if you want a deeper hamstring stretch. Doing what resonates with your body tonight. Left knee is bent and we slowly bring that left foot back down toward the mat and then drawing that right knee across the body toward the left side. We feel the ball of the right foot touch down toward the mat and catch that outer right kneecap with our left hand, T-shaping out that left arm. 
coming into a twist on the sun. Again, going as far over as it feels good to you. Accessing maybe that deeper stretch in that right hip if that feels really good. Or maybe it doesn't and you don't want to go there, so don't. Let the belly expand and contract. One more good deep breath in and we'll draw both knees back into the chest. Slowly make your way down, bringing the legs long. And now make yourself that five to 10% more comfortable coming into Shavasana. Remember, if you have a blanket, you could cover the body. You could bring the feet toward the edges of the mat. The palms can be up, receiving the good energy and the good words that you're about to hear. You can dim the lights. If you don't want to be in that reclined position and you happen to have a chair, remember you can bring the calves onto the chair seat. Just make your way into your Shavasana tonight. And hear the words on choosing happiness. Choosing Happiness comes from a book called The Perspectivist Handbook, a guide to practical perspectivism and happy daily living. By Dr. Jeff Zahn. Taking a good deep inhale in and an exhale out. Just being in your body tonight on the mat. Taking a good deep inhale in and as you exhale, just allowing the body to settle. Noticing that the mind rests at the place where that body touches the earth. So just letting the weight sink into the mat. Practical perspectivism is both a philosophical construct and a simple guide to living. It's a culmination and fulfillment of a line of thinking that has sought to ease our human condition and to make our passing through this world more fluid, happier, and more joyful. Happiness is inside us. We just need to know where to find it and how to cultivate it, how to sustain it, and how to regain it when we lose touch. Happiness keeps us healthier and makes us better humans in general. Happiness is something pretty much every single one of us can have more of. You simply have to want it and believe that you can achieve it. And then be willing to exercise command over your own mind. And isn't that something that we all want in the first place? Something that is this essential part of freedom. To be masters of our own minds. Self-control and self-awareness is the hardest part. But here's the promise. Every bit of work that you put into the challenge that challenge of you will be rewarded.
in more ways than just purely your own personal happiness. Working on your own self-control and self-awareness. Being here now. As much as possible. Will enhance your productiveness. Your efficiency. Will improve your friendships. And much more. And all of which will positively feed back on increasing your happiness. If being happy makes us healthier, helps us live longer and more productive lives, makes us more pleasant to be around, and thereby creates an environment in which others can more easily attain happiness. Choosing happiness seems pretty reasonable and perhaps important, an important pursuit after all. And while the first three justifications are meaningful to us individually, the latter reasons add a moral imperative to looking after our own happiness. It may very well be the best thing that you can do for others as well. Being a model of happiness gives others hope that they too can be happier. Establishing yourself as a reliable base of happiness provides others with the surety that they can find in and with you a world in which happiness is allowed and encouraged and accepted and one in which they may be happy as well. And a happy world is a peaceful world, a nurturing and supportive world. In short, a humanist world of mutual respect. Taking care of your own happiness is one of the most satisfying and gratifying ways to make our world a better place. The Beatles opened our mind to the lyrics, and in the end, the love you take is equal to the love that you make. And so does practical perspectivism. It opens our minds to happily journeying through this one run that we've been granted. Grateful for that. Life. Accept responsibility for your actions and thoughts. Believe that you can change them and do so. You get to choose. You. You choose your thoughts. You choose your actions. You choose your life. Choose happiness. Slowly start to make some movement to your fingers and to your toes. Start to wake the body up. Start to make that connection again with the body to the earth. Maybe take the arms overhead and start to inhale, letting the body elongate, letting the breath become expansive again. And then slowly roll yourself over to your right or to your left side. As you cradle your head and your arm, you offer up loving kindness to yourself. You came to your mat today. You came to move and to breathe, to strengthen the upper body. And then when you're ready, make your way up to a comfortable seat. I invite you to keep the eyes closed or the gaze soft, staying within your practice. Making your way up to that comfortable, erect and dignified posture though to finish your practice today. Taking a good deep inhale in and an exhale out. Gratitude. We bring our hands to prayer and finish off with the words of Gandhi. 
my favorite ones of all. Keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts become your words. And keep your words positive because your words become your behavior. Keep your behavior positive because your behavior comes your habits. And keep your habits positive because your habits become your values. Keep your values positive because your values become your destiny. Let's take a good deep inhale in and let's bow together, sharing the light in one another. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing this day 16 of practice together. We'll come back tomorrow for day 17. Thank you all for being here, sharing this wonderful Sangha, this community that we created on Facebook, on Zoom, to all the students. Namaste, good night.